Maiden Essay is the show that brings young people closer to their dreams. And today is no different, as we meet Kyle, an architecture student from the Twani University of Technology. His dream is to design and build self-sustainable villages. Wow! Kyle, that is sure a noble dream. Kyle also has a love for fashion, and he believes there is a fine line between fashion and architecture design. Today, the Maiden Essay team will put Kyle's dream to the test. He'll travel to a rural village in the Northwest to see how he can change the lives of an entire community. Only on Made in SA, the show that celebrates young people of excellence and takes them one step closer to their dream. My name is Carl Colson. I'm studying architecture at the Tuani University of Technology in Pretoria. The natural talent that's required to become an architect would be a design capability and the feel for three-dimensional spaces. Okay, so this is one of our studio spaces. The first shocker is on the right-hand side. We cook and live here. As you can see, dishes are being washed at the moment. These are one of my fellow second year students that are working with me at the moment. As you can see, people even live underneath their desks. Okay, so this is my design space that I use. I've got this inspirational board where I just stick things up that inspire me. There are different things from photography to fashion to sketches. My love for architecture started in grade four in primary school in my history class when we learned about Sir Herbert Baker that designed the union buildings. And I just walked out of the class and I knew that's what I wanted to do. This is one of the life drawings we did last week. And this is my most current one. I even drew Coldplay because we enjoyed that. This is my most current drawings of people. I won't say architecture is art. It's more of a design skill to design space for living in that's functional and works and that's responsible at the end of the day. Uh, yes. Morning, guys. So now we know a little about Kyle. Let's get to class. It's a Tuesday morning and Kyle's lecturer, Peter, is giving the students their final term project. Different units that sits now on this long line. So obviously when you look at the precedence, you'll see um, it could be now any arrangement as long as there's a datum level that's parallel to Skinner Street. So it can be a conceptual line that forms with different nodes. Subjects that will help you study architecture is definitely science and math, but that's a requisite subjects that you need. But uh, what's helped me as well is art, because you get to do with history of architecture and art. You have perforations and things in it, so that it actually links um, the northern and southern side of, of this road. Kyle is an extremely... Um, energetic person, he's extremely positive, um, you know, he, he, um, if you ask him to do something, he can do five things at once. Kyle definitely will be a successful architect, I think, because he's very good with um, interacting with people and, is, and I think the main thing is being able to design, um, and, but not to design for yourself, but to design for the people who are going to use the facilities. The best part about Kyle, if you go give him a credit, he's always open to accepting new advice, he's always looking for new advice. The design scheme we're working on now is Magnolia Dal Park, which is based in Pretoria, and it's basically a park development and restoring what's already there and just adding to the existing facilities. As you can see, this is my site. It's all the contours laid out, and this is a conceptual site where I basically work out for myself where it needs development and what I want to leave. The upper part I want to change into a fusion restaurant, cuisine that opens up to the outside, but it basically forms private cubicles with the doors. So you I would describe Carl as an extremely energetic person. You know, you can ask him to do something, you'll immediately get onto it. Um, and also he loves 
reading and he loves looking at movies because that's what architecture is all about. You need to expose yourself and you must be able to, to um, understand your environment and also understand where you are at a specific place. I want to develop this because, because it's part of the stormwater system. I want to make it a more solid concrete piece so that the water becomes more playful within the space. Uh, you're telling a story. Be something a bit so Kyle, when you're not in class, what else do you get up to? I've got a great passion for fashion as well. So Kyle, what's the connection between fashion and architecture? To both work with the human body, just in different ways, but both need to study the way a human being lives and making life more comfortable, and I think Architects can learn a great deal from fashion designers as well as fashion designers from architects. Very grungy, very dark. But I'm funny because oh, that, see what I mean? Oh, that one as a photographer, I enjoy working with Kyle because for myself, I don't like having a lot of structure in my photo shoots. It's literally, let's shoot something like this in this style and we just literally wing it. We never have any set structures or anything like that and together we both get the best results each time we shoot. That look and feel, that very grungy, dark, nothing is really lit too well. I was amazed with what came out. It was better than I imagined, so I'm really happy with the shot. OK, enough already. Time to relax. Let's meet your friends. These are my best friends, Gideon and Miller. Gideon is my truth buddy. Whenever I want to know the truth, I'll turn to him, whether it's good or bad. I would describe Kyle as the, to say the truth, he's quite weird sometimes, but he's an interesting guy. It's really nice to be his friend. He's, he's the most outgoing guy I know. I've Whatever. not actually seen it. I've never sat in a scene. Miller's the protector in the friendship. He always listens to both sides of the story. He loves people, loves the attention. That's all he needs. Then, he's, then he'll be able to thrive. My dream in architecture would be to go into sustainable design completely with everything I do and to end up designing sustainable villages within and around Africa. My philosophy on life is just to give people advantages that they never had and to help even make their life just a day longer. After the break, Kyle travels to a rural village in the northwest where he'll meet his maiden SA coach. She'll give him a challenge that could change the lives of an entire community. Today you're going to get the opportunity to assist these people of Matopistat with one of their biggest needs, and that is to store their vegetables. Stay tuned to see how Kyle handles his challenge. Hey Kyle. Hey, how you doing man? Good, good. Welcome back to Made in SA. Before the break, we met Kyle, an architecture student from the Twani University of Technology. One of our design schemes. His dream is to design and build self-sustainable villages. Kyle also has a love for fashion, and he believes there is a fine line between fashion and architecture design. Today, the Made in SA team will put Kyle's dream to the test in a rural village in the northwest. Okay, that was completely out of order. I was told to meet my mate in SA coach here, so we're waiting for that and to see what's going to happen. It looks interesting and I'm excited to see what I need to do. Hi Kyle, I'm Nadine. I'm your mate in SA coach for today. I'm from a company called Quantum Step Human Development. We focus on human and potential development. We work mainly in rural areas, communities all over. The people here in Matopistat, they are quite a, a wealthy community in a certain sense, but like all other communities and villages, they need to start becoming sustainable themselves, look after themselves, become independent and um, Obviously, the first thing that I always then do is to start planting vegetables, food. This morning when I got here, I was very excited when I saw the surrounding, the context that I was placed in. I knew I was going to give 
be given the opportunity to help the community. I wasn't sure in what way, and I was hoping that it would be something functional that can that I can give to the community, and it's just not something to show for the show. Today you're going to get the opportunity to assist these people of Matopistat with one of their biggest needs, and that is to store their vegetables. Like I said previously, that it's one of their biggest priorities to, to plant their, their own vegetables, so they, would, they want something that they can have to store their vegetables, keep it longer safe. So your challenge for the day is to build them a cooler that works without electricity, so um, that can assist them. Kyle, I think he was a bit nervous, <laughs> very excited. I think this is really a huge challenge for him, a huge opportunity to, to get closer to his dream. And uh, I think the more exposure he can get, you know, the more those dreams can become a reality. Kyle, I'm going to introduce you now to your other Made in SA coach. His name is Nick, he's a green builder. Are you excited? Yes, it's going to be a challenge, but I'm um, always up for a new challenge. Okay. Right, are you ready? Yes, Let's yes. go. Hello. Hello. Hi. Hi. Kyle, this is Nick. He's a green boulder. He's your other made in SI coach for today. We've got um, some pine timbers over there, which pine is, a, is an alien plant in South Africa, but sustainable. Um, it grows really quickly. Um, we've got chicken mesh and two pockets of anthracite and you've got your tools. The whole idea behind the anthracite cooler is that it takes, um, using evaporation, um, draws energy from the atmosphere and by, by the moisture evaporating actually induces a cooling effect. For us today it's important that you've got to put a design together, you put your architectural skills to use and design something and we'll go through that, check it that it's going to work and from there we've got to build it. When I heard about the challenge, I immediately start thinking about and brainstorming and try and finding ideas that I've seen before. And a lot of projects went through my head that I've heard about coolers and aircon systems that all naturally used. So I tried to incorporate all of these things. And the moment when I saw my phone doesn't want to Google, I kind of freaked out. Carl, here's your office and we'll leave you to it. We look forward to seeing what you can come up with. When I sat down, I had my piece of paper and my pen. The first thing I always do is just draw a line, hatch, just to get something on the paper. And then I started, just, I'm just sketching all the ideas I had and things I've known about. And from that I started designing, figuring out a way what needs to be done. Hey Carl. Hey, how you doing, man? Good, good. So can you talk me through what you've got so far? My basic design so far is I want to do a, uh, a main structure out of um, the SA pine. Kyle had to design the cooler himself. Um, he took on the, the basic principles fairly quickly. He'd done some of the work in his, you know, in his varsity course. Um, I think he had a fairly good understanding of what was needed um, and he put that down on paper quite quite easily. So there are going to be five sides. Um, the four sides of the structure will be coal and the top side of the roof will also be coal. Mm -hmm. And then the bottom piece will be an adobe mix that can absorb the, cool, um, the cold and then just re-regulate it within the fridge or cooler itself. Because you've got, you've got that, that wind Scoop. Scoop. You're going to have quite a bit of um, so you can, uplift. Yep. But isn't it going to be too high for them to reach into it then? No, no you can drop this into the ground. So if you reduce the, the distance there. Nick's um, advice really, really helped me. I mean, he's an expert in what he's doing. And so that just helped me because I was, up until now, all these things that I've learned were theoretical. And it was now the first time that I actually had to sit down and build it. What I want you to do now is to come with me. I'm going to introduce you to one of the community leaders. And then I want you to go and I want you to actually engage with the community members and then get them involved, engage them so that yes. they can claim it. Right, okay, let's go. 
When Nolene asked me to go into the community and go find people to help me, I was very excited because I love meeting new people and just talking to people, finding out their ambitions and dreams. Hi, Sano. Nice to see you again. Sano you. is a community leader in Matupi Stad. In this village, we have a chief by the name of Chief Moleko Matupe. On this side, we have a tribal office. That's where we meet when we have meetings. Yes. And we have a primary school on this side. My impression of the village, I was quite um, stunned to see the, the amount of work that goes into it, the amount of caring and love that goes into getting this community to work. This whole community works together to make it a better place for everybody. After the break, Kyle puts a team together to help him build his cooler. If you want to help us, we're going to build a fridge that I designed. But things take slightly longer than expected. Uh, the ch most challenging part for putting the structure together was I've never worked with wood. Will his cooler idea work? To find out, stay tuned to Made in SA. We takes us long for. Welcome back to Made in SA. Earlier we met Kyle, an architecture student from the Tswani University of Technology. He's crazy about green architecture and he wants to design self-sustainable villages. Kyle's dream was put to the test as he travelled to a rural village in the northwest province where he had to design and build a cooler that will keep fresh produce fresh in the community. So far Nick approved Kyle's design. If water goes over this and when and you end. Now Kyle has to put a team together in the community to help him build the cooler. Will everything go according to plan? Ah, uh, sorry, can you give me a lift to the high school? Yeah. Cool, thanks. Let's have a look. When I was walking to find people, I came across a guy on a donkey cart and I really wanted to get a, like, catch a lift from him to the high school because it was quite a while to get there. And it was interesting just to drive with him. The weirdest thing was it felt like the whole cart was going to fall apart, even though it didn't. And to Look into the rear of two donkeys is also not the pleasant sight, but it was still fun. I mean, it's an experience. So you guys live in the village? Yes, yes, yes. Okay. Hi, how are you? What's your name? Ishmael. Do you want to help us? We're going to build a fridge that I designed. Or not anymore. So we're going to start building, but I'm going to explain everything to you guys now. Okay, cool. Hello, Carl. Hi, how are you? Cool, man. Okay, you got everybody? a team. Yes, this is Nick. When I came back with my crew, I had to brief them, quick brief, and I thought it's going to be difficult trying to translate what I wanted. But they knew exactly what I was going for. Okay. So we're going to use the chicken mesh. Okay, we're going to build a structure, a frame, clad it with chicken mesh, and then put this within the chicken mesh. If water goes over this and, wind, and you add wind to it, yeah. it will create evaporation that will cool the inside. Oh. So I'm going to... Put your guys into teams. I see you like, you can work with wood, so I want you to construct the roof for me. Yeah. But I'm gonna measure everything, tell you exactly where to cut, how to do everything. I want you guys to go source materials for us, to go find things. While I work with these guys, I'm gonna give you a list of what to get. So while I work with these guys, measure everything out, and the two of you are gonna build the main structure for me. Awesome, so you're ready. Yeah. The eagerness was definitely there, and I, I mean, the way he showed him how to do this, but maybe he could have explained better from exactly how this thing is going to work. I mean, it's a new concept for them, so I think he could have explained a little bit better to them. There were some there, flying sheets, so maybe they can go look there. No. His interaction was good. He, he did, he made an effort to, to do the job. I think he he could have done more in terms of um, understanding the guys, where they came from. Uh, you know, I didn't hear questions about, are you working, are you not working, what are your interests, that sort of thing. So I think a more personal approach would, would do him well, um, especially in community work. It's, it's, it's a, big, a big requirement. Okay, me and you can go to the next one. Similarly, we've got a bit stick to it, yeah. Because it's going to be very small. Uh, the ch most challenging part for putting the structure together was I've never worked with wood for that matter and it's one thing to draw something on a CAD program but it's something different to actually see how it works and just to get the wood to actually be stable and not fall apart was for me the most challenging part. Okay that one's completely out now. Well now that we can 
The chicken mesh I found was quite easier than I thought it would be, although it stung me a few times, but that's part of the job. Not too bad. I think we must just tighten it a bit more. Okay. So far, so good. Progress is going good on the structure. We're busy lying in the anthracite into the structure. I have to do an adobe mix now for the base of the cooler. So I have to go look for water quickly so you can come walk with me and see where we can find water. Cool. So the ingredients we're going to mix is some straw. We've got some fresh cow manure in the box. And we use a bit of water. And the cow manure also just prevents the cracking as does the straw. It gives it a bit more texture. It's the fresh water you pumped, is it? Yes. Great. All right, now, so just mix it in. I like the way Carl's incorporated using mud in, in the base. He's looked around, he's seen you know, what's in the environment, what materials he can source, and he's found an application for it. So the grass just acts as a binder, basically. It's a binder, yeah. I think for most kids, and for all of us growing up, we played in the mud, we played with various textures, materials, that sort of thing. The, the design element is something you can learn, but the feel of different materials, textures, stone, rock, um, timbers, those are things that you can really only feel, and I think that's that's what I'd encourage: is a hand, hands-on experience of the different materials. First of all, it can create opportunities. I heard them talking while they were busy that. Um, Two or three of the guys really, they, they, they are taking this seriously to actually design and then start a business from there. It's a project that they can start in the community, which is for me the best thing of the whole day. That it can eventually create business opportunities in Matopistad. All that needs to be done now, daily, well, three times a day, you just have to water the coal. So you can just damp it up. I think the, the structure is, is strong and we've, we've reinforced it with you know, various ways, but he needed to work on that as well and needs to keep that in mind in the future. Um, I think also implementing the design took a bit more. Um, we're running a bit late now. Um, I think putting it all together took a little longer than he thought. And then all that needs to be done is the complete cooler needs to be sunken into the ground and the footings will be treated with sunflower oil so it's not harmful to the environment. And you can put your own lock in here if you want to, just to make, keep it more safe. So guys, just want to thank you. My hands are dirty, so just do something like this. I think Carl's very keen to get involved. He's very keen to get his hands dirty, get stuck in. He's, very, he's very interested in what, you know, took a real keen interest in what he was doing. And I think that's a good, um, a good trait to have. He's, you know, he's very interested in working with the material again and being able to talk to potential clients and jobs, but coming from an experienced background. And I think that's a great one to have. So what do you think of this? Yeah, the project is quite convincing. So we're going to keep this, so we might see if it works. If it works, we're going to start to produce one for ourselves. As long as it, if it's work, there's a market for it, for anything. Being on Maiden SA definitely brought me closer to my dream because it made it a reality. I've actually started with it. I've started working in a community, even though I might be coming back, but I've gained some contacts and they really want to be, they want to get me involved in developing communities. So I'm excited to see what this will bring for me, even if it's just by helping this particular community by upgrading will already be enough for me. Well done, Kyle. A green challenge well executed. You're the kind of architect the world needs. Next week on Made in SA, we meet Cindy, a mover and shaker young entrepreneur. She owns her own flea market.
studies marketing and works as a photographer at her varsity newspaper. But all of this is just a stepping stone for Cindy because she would like to own her own photographic concept store one day. We team her up with a Made in SA coach who's going to give her a couple of pointers on how to make her dream a reality. All of this on next week's episode of Made in SA.